No more throwing the book at literally, literary hogs holding on to library goodies for way too long if the wider upper has its way. A lot of us will be guilty of said crime. You know the deal, a library book on the shelf of shame issued circa, well, too many years ago to count. It's got so bad you simply can't take it back. And the fine, whoa, it could be weightier than the luminaries. Wider upper councils are looking to get rid of overdue library fines, wiping the existing debt and throwing open the door to previous banned bookworms. Carterton has led the charge. Library Committee member Councillor Dale Williams joins us now. Dale, why the change of heart? Well, it's really just a progression, I guess. Um, the Wairapa Library Services is a, is a partnership, a shared service partnership between South Wairapa District Council and Carterton District Council so that we can provide you know, a decent selection and and quality service to Featherston, Martinborough, Greytown and Carterton. And I guess worldwide this is happening as well. Like last year, for example, our committee agreed to wipe the overdue fines on children's books. So the logical next progression is that we look at that for all books. I mean, the the cost has always far outweighed the benefit. And I guess we're just trying to be consistent with uh, some of the other facilities and activities that we provide across our district. So how many fines? are on the books at the moment? About $6,000 annually works out to be. We've decided that we would rather put that sort of money into incentives to encourage more people to use the books and enjoy them um, for as long as they want to enjoy them. I mean, you know, we don't find people for enjoying themselves too much at our free swimming pools and we don't find people for having too much fun at our free school holiday programs. So it's just logical that we don't uh, support finding people for enjoying their reading so much that they want to keep their free library books a little bit longer. So Dale, how much did you have to owe before you were banned from the library? It's not a case of banning. What generally... Well, stopping you stopping you get another book out. Yeah, well, what generally would happen, it would work in reverse, that a person that owed fines, and we're only talking a few dollars, yeah. owed fines, and then they would they would be quite embarrassed by that and they would stay away from the library, which was counterproductive. I mean... You know, councils don't and nor should they um, factor in fines uh, as part of their revenue gathering And uh, each year. You know, we would rather put our energy into encouraging people to use what we have rather than penalise them for a whole lot of reasons why a book ends up being overdue by a few days. Yeah, but, so it's, but, it's an equity issue, isn't it, Dale? You want people to read. You want totally. them to come to the library. Totally. Look, a- absolutely. And libraries have moved on from what they were 10 or 15 years ago, where it was all hush-hush and only books were available. Now with audios and internet and free Wi-Fi and, you know, and, and toy libraries and things like that and photocopying facilities, the libraries are actually a really active and and vibrant and engaging place. So any for the sake of a few dollars to put up blockages and hurdles for good people, local people to come in and use our facilities, we think it's counterproductive. So those fines that you talked about, I mean, how many people will have had a fine that maybe were staying away, as you say, out of embarrassment or because they didn't want to pay up? Well, it's difficult to know because some yeah. people had more than one fine and obviously fines, you know, that's the thing with a, a bylaw or a policy. As soon as you put it in place, the staff have no choice and no latitude but to apply it. And you, you're talking about, you know, um, a, a matters of hours or days when a fine kicks in and then, of course, it incurs penalties and on it goes. And, you know, as I say, we've got far bigger fish to fry and far more important things on council's agendas to be um, hassling our public with this sort of thing. Yeah, so what would you say to some of those people who are probably mortally embarrassed about having outstanding fines and really would like to come into the library without that sort of hanging over their heads? What's your message to them? Well, I mean, one, Carterton District Council Day approved the wiping of the fines and South Wairapa District Council's got to go through their processes. But all things being equal, as from 12th of October this year, uh, fines will be wiped and people are free to come and go, uh, use the facilities with no, um, you know, no residual uh, history getting in the way of them using what we've set up to be probably the best library service um, anywhere around. Hey, Dale. Mm-hmm. Hey, mm, so, overdue library books, have you ever committed that crime? 
Uh, look, I have to be honest, I have a couple of times in the short time we've been in Carterton. Both my daughter and I are avid readers, and a couple of times I have, for various reasons. In one case, I went away for a couple of weeks and forgot to renew it online. And there again, you know, I'm now going, as of 12th of October, I'm going to be able to walk into our own local library with my head held high and uh, um, shy of any embarrassment. So I'm looking forward to that. The slate is clean. Thank you for joining us. That is Dale Williams uh, saying there that while the Carlton Council's canning um, fines on overdue library books, you can go back into the library with no sh-